This is the EVP Podcast. And it is the EVP Podcast with your hosts, Ghosty. And Beaker. And we're back with a, a, a week off for Thanksgiving. Yes, Thanksgiving, birthday happened. My birthday happened. Someone got old. Ghosty turned 25. Again. Again. For the 25th time. <laughs> it's getting close to that. <laughs> uh i feel i'm 42 no, no i'm not. not i checked you again i'm 41 41 <laughs> you're younger than i am not by much i forget how old i am sometimes i don't care anymore because i'm 25 for life once you hit 40 you just like kind of don't care yeah I just stay 25 forever as long as i can <laughs> well we did one last investigation that we that could be our last investigation it could be anybody's last investigation actually it could at- but at this location. Yes. It was our farewell to the to the Ritz. Yeah, we're not 100% sure yet um, if we're going to ever go back or be able to go back. They did sell the theater finally. It, yeah, papers were signed. Papers were signed a couple days ago as of this recording. So As of this airing, actually. So, yeah, yeah nobody knows if that's going to be able to investigate again or if it's going to be used as... Uh, Re, you know, reused as something for the future. Who knows? Repurposed. Yep. We do not know. But we did get one last investigation in. Yeah, we were the last ones. <laughs> yes. And we had friends. Yes, we were joined by the Dr. Ghost Hunters. Yes. Which, that, that that's our, some really cool stuff. It was our first joint investigation with the Ghost Hunters of the Doctors. The Dr. Ghost Hunters. <laughs> but, um... They were pulling out all the... Why does it sound like all staticky on mine? I feel I, I feel fine over here. No, I know I, you that do. sounds good over here. I'm gonna turn. So I'm turning stuff down. Okay, so here's the deal: they're pulling out all their equipment. They have like cases and cases of, of all the things we want. They're pulling all of this <laughs> shit out of their case, uh, and we were just lighting up with every device. I just, I just, I looked over at Ghosty and I'm like, "Hey, man! Apparently, we're in the wrong profession. We need to become doctors so we can buy all this stuff." That's a lot of school. I don't want to do though. They, they offered to let us borrow some of it, and I said, "Do I have to give it back?" They immediately re, re, recanted that offer. Um, they're like, "Never. How about never mind?" Yeah. How about um, don't touch it. Don't look at it. <laughs> but yeah, they had all the good stuff. Like what? Um, everything you can think of. Oh my gosh! So what can you think of? They had, they had some tracer lights, not the one from Ghost Stop. But they had some different tracer lights that were pretty cool. Um, we did have an experience with those at one point in time throughout the night. They did have a lot of video cameras because they do have a YouTube channel. If you haven't already gone and check it out after uh, Chad was here, uh, you should go check out their channel. They have a lot of cool videos that they've put up they actually live streamed our investigation with them which is also available on their youtube channel it's just dr ghost hunters i really need to get my gopro out in the field with uh, you know i have i have two that i take on every investigation but i can't remember the last time i charged them <laughs> i have some full spectrum gopros yeah we really need to get into recording some shit because there's a lot of times where i'm having experiences and i'm not recording anything well i've just been leaving my audio recorder in like one location for most of the night yeah um i did that on this investigation i left my recorder in the projection room of the ritz i do have an evp i will play that on the next episode i didn't clip it and cut it yet but um yeah they, they had they had so much stuff they had one of the the phasma boxes yeah we were trying to tune that thing in and that Is was that what they're called they're, yeah, they're it's like, like a, the paranormal yeah. um like huff paranormal huff paranormal makes them the 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 reverb pedal yeah, is the attached reverb, to a speaker yeah it's the reverb spirit box and it's picking up white noise and uh sweeping as well as tuning that reverb so you got that long drawn out uh, effect that it can kind of echo yes and uh, i guess that what that does is gives the spirit more time in that frequency to speak yes so you're able to hear a voice uh come through in that reverb and it sounds really cool i, I don't know if you've heard it with the huff paranormal on his i i have and it's something oh it's the the paranormal portal that's what it's called paranormal well, it depends on who made it it depends on who made it the, yeah that one was a i think one portal. of the originals was made by huff paranormal it was the portal i think he's the one that came up with that idea yeah yeah and it's really interesting um we 
you kind of actually got it tuned in a little bit. Yeah, I was, I was I didn't playing really with hear it. Anything. I was tuning in Tokyo. Yes, you were. <laughs> and then I let you actually play with the portal after you tuned in Tokyo. Um, <laughs> Your portal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Felt like Super Mario. Yeah. So I didn't really hear anything come through that, though. Um, no. There was... Just like a little bit of, of noise coming through, but yeah, I was able to get that reverb going, but we never really started questioning with it much. No, and we did we did test out the Ovilus. I know you used it more than I did throughout the night. And um, I don't remember much coming through the, on the Ovilus. I, I didn't either. We used it during our SS method, uh, and nothing really came through <coughs> there either. Uh, what else? We did have a couple REM pods. We had one point in time where their REM pod just started going off, and we couldn't figure out why. It just, it would... It was, was it, going. It, it was going, and it would just get, like, stuck. Um, I did teach them how to use a pendulum to find a portal. Okay. I remember showing that. At one point in time. Um, did you guys have anything go on in Theater 2? I didn't really investigate in there. Uh, in Theater 2, I think mostly what we experienced... I actually no, there wasn't really. Oh yeah, duh. We did actually have a lot go on in theater too. Uh, one of the first things we did in theater too. Um, I walked down there. I, I was just trying to do something on my own. I walked down and I decided I'm just gonna keep walking down the aisle until I feel something, and I'm gonna stop there. So just kind of paint a picture of theater too. So you it's don't have that to go long. Back. It's, it, it used to be an alleyway that was turned into a theater. So it's just. A long alley with seats all yeah, off onto your left side. Long row, like long, a uh, whole long row of, of seats. Like, I mean, this is a lot deeper than your normal theater, and it's like maybe what six chairs to a row. About that, yeah. Yeah, it's about six chairs to a row. So these rows are not very, uh, you know. And the screen itself is not very big either. So no, the screen's very small. So it is a weird theater setup. Said, it was it was an alley in between buildings that they walled in and turned into so, a theater. So yeah, you can only walk down the right side. So I'm walking down the right side, and I know of, of the one chair that they have in the row where yeah. there's a known spirit. Yep, that's it, not something that's been revealed before. Yeah, so we've we've know we know about that. And I was just walking down in complete darkness to... F- uh, yeah, that's not something we've talked about on the show. That chair. Yeah, we have talked about this, the chair. So, yeah. Not really, but... Okay. We didn't? No. Oh, we weren't. We, have. we weren't revealing any of, any of Ladon's secrets. That was one of them. Oh. Well, yeah, that was one of the things where there was a row that has a tape. And on a certain chair, there's an X. And on that chair, there was a, a spirit that doesn't like people sitting in his chair. Okay. <clears throat> now it's out there. Well, because I don't think anyone's going to be back there. And I don't think not. that 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 second theater is going to exist anymore if they redo things. Maybe. I don't know. But, but anyways, um, I wanted to see if I could just sense something in that theater. Didn't care if it was on that row or not. And I ended up walking down. And I thought I had passed that row by this time. And I ended up stopping once I started feeling something. And I actually stopped a row before that row. And I was like, interesting. Anyways, when we went back in there later and we were trying to get some stuff, I was not getting anything, any interaction on that seat. But uh, two rows behind that row, Dr. Ghost Hunters had set up their stuff right there and their equipment was going crazy. And getting uh, a lot of interaction right there. And it was pretty insane with with different uh, EMF devices. Now, were they all three in the room at the time? No. When all that stuff was going off? Well, let's see. Yes, there was three of them in there, and Derek, uh, DVO, and myself. Okay. I was probably in the other theater with LaDon. Yeah. Yeah, you guys were in there. I was just checking, because two ray radios can set off some of the EMF stuff, and they were using them throughout the night. Well, my K2, like I said, was two rows ahead in that row, and was not... Okay. Going off. And then I even moved mine over by them, and it, sometimes it would only be certain ones going off. Gotcha. So uh, I don't think they were even using their two-way radios. At that time? No. That's why I was asking if they were all three in the room, there would be no point of them using it. Exactly. So, yeah, they were all in there besides uh, the, the one that was she was out in the fireplace. 
Yeah, but she was. Um, yeah, she was running the computer. She was running yes. the YouTube and all that. And uh, let's see what else. Oh, the basement. We ended up. That was my throat. <laughs> we ended up um, getting cursed out in the basement. Yeah, so you did. We can get uh, under under the theater uh, where they kind of have just the, uh, the the furnaces and everything, and little tunnels and and things back there that don't really go anywhere besides from you know under the screen but when we were down there and I, we were using the echo box we were getting cursed out and it was we weren't getting any curse words before then and once we were down there and we kind of stopped in this area and letting it play it was just spitting out cuss words at us well, we really didn't get any after that either no no, nothing else after getting out of the basement. Never got any more curse words come through. So what's fun about that is that door was actually supposed to have been locked when we got there. That's right. The The owner at the time had gone and done something down there and forgot to lock the door. So y'all weren't even supposed to be down there to begin with. No. And during our investigation, after you guys left the room, LaDonna and I were kind of investigating and we found it was one of the ushers. <laughs> the, there's still a, um, she actually showed us this really cool video that an, another team had got recently uh, uh, you could see one of the ushers actually walking down the aisle in the main theater and I believe it was that guy he was actually upset because you weren't supposed to be down there because it was supposed to be locked yep so I, I believe that's I believe it was, DVO's fault again I believe it was one <laughs> of the, the spirits of one of the ushers that was upset that you guys were down there because you weren't supposed to be I believe it. I definitely could feel that. Uh, I believe that Usher uh, was kind of hanging out later in theater, too. Probably. Um, before we left, I went in there by myself in the dark. And I just stood against the wall, like, about halfway down the theater. Uh, yeah, about halfway down the theater, I just stood against the wall. And then I could feel a presence kind of in front of me in that row. And then I was just like, okay, I'll get out. As I'm walking out, I could just feel that presence following me, like in the row of chairs. Just as I'm walking up the the aisle to the to the, to the entrance to the back of the theater, I could just feel it follow me all the way back there, just escorting me out. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. The usher was mad at you. Yeah, man. I think so I pissed him off. Apparently, he didn't like something you were doing. Yeah, he did not like me hanging out. He did I, not. I made a new friend that night. Did you? Did I tell you about, uh, I'm, there was a spirit there. His name was Samuel. He was a new spirit. And he was actually hanging out with you in the office while we were doing the SDS method. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I don't think you realize he was there, but um, he's a newer spirit. I talked to him a little bit. Uh, he was 17, almost 18. What was this one's name? Samuel. I just said it like four times. Yeah, I was just saying, I was trying to remember the one that kept, the name that kept coming up. It was that one was Stephen. Stephen, and then we never figured out who Stephen was. No, but, uh, but Samuel, uh, I did talk to him a little bit, and he was a huge fan of Harry Potter. That's right. Okay? I remember you told me this. And he liked me because I remind him of Hagrid, because <laughs> I'm a big, tall guy and I've got the big beard, and so and I'm fat. So, um, <laughs> yeah, he I I apparently reminded him of Hagrid. And so he kind of liked me and I told him he could follow me around and hang out with me while we were there at the theater. He did try to follow me home. You remember at the end of the night, I was like, I kept looking down the hallway and I'm like, no, you got to stay here, bud. Yeah. <laughs> and he was just like, you told me I could follow you. And I'm like, just, just here. You got to stay here. LaDon will take care of you. <laughs> I'm like, you can hang out with her. Um, what I thought was funny is I was asking him, I'm like, Hey, did you enjoy watching movies here? And I'm like, he's like, yeah. And I go, which ones? He's like, duh, Harry Potter. <laughs> and and I, I asked him at one point, um, what, if there was a movie playing right now, like if he could still see movies playing, even though they're not actually playing. And he says, yeah. And I said, well, what movie's playing right now? And then Dawn laughed because she could actually physically hear him. And he's like, Ghost Hunters. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and what I thought was interesting is later that night in theater one, uh, I don't know if it was on the Echo Vox it was or on the Echo Vox. I think it was on the Echo Vox. We were asking questions and we asked something like, Hey, what shows do you like What's to your watch? Favorite movie, What's your favorite movie? And it said ghost hunter on the Echo Vox yeah. and LaDonna and I just both started laughing and we're like, that's Samuel. <laughs> 
Um, so he was kind of a cool, fun spirit to talk to. I, he was, like I said, he was new there to me anyways. And that was kind of fun talking to him. Um, we did have, you saw the tracer lights go off while you yeah. were trying to set up that the portal. Yeah, well, I was uh, messing with the portal. I was kind of going back and forth, uh, like messing with it, kind of st- uh, standing back from it. And one of the times I turned around, I see these tracer lights. There's a, probably a good dozen in a strip. Yeah. And there was a section that was bunched up a little bit. About five of them, about five of these lights uh, were kind of bunched up. And all of them pulsed at the same time. And they, they changed because I think they were like salt, like green solid. But when you move them, they have to be kind of hit kind of hard or something sets them off. Yeah, it was it was and not easy for us to set those. No, off, you couldn't just grab them and do it. Like you kind of had to bounce it in yeah. order for them to go off. But these were staying still, and like there was a cluster of them that were together, and they all like changed to like purple or whatever color they changed to. But um, yeah, I saw them all do it. All uh, that little bunch of them do that. I was thrown back by that. That was pretty cool. Uh, we couldn't get it to recreate that. Like I tried walking by it again. Oh well, yeah, I was, yeah, I was walking by it, and I stopped back at the portal. And then that's when it happened. I remember now. We had uh, Ladon put a cat ball in the crying room, and there was no one in the crying room at the time. We were all standing outside of it, and all of a sudden the cat ball just started going off, <laughs> started lighting up. And then during the Estes method, when I was asking questions, there was a, and Derek uh, DVO heard it audibly i keep calling this i call him his legal name constantly oops that's okay but uh he heard this audibly and i didn't i totally missed it but hearing it back on the audio totally heard a woman's voice well you hear the knocking too and then we heard knocking and so what i found was interesting is because before you guys sent me that clip i had listened to my audio of the sds method and i didn't hear that on mine at all is it, it was only in that closet yep. uh, or the the wall that that stairwell that, yep because there's a set of stairs that goes to a basement in there and i was standing in there and that wall adjoins to ladon's apartment and ladon had talked about she was had been hearing knocking which was new yeah this knocking was new and she was hearing this but it was loud where she said she was hearing it it was it was really loud it was coming from the projection room bathroom and she said that is where the knocking's been coming from, and it was really loud. This one, I heard it on the wall that adjoins to hers, and nobody was in her apartment. She was out. <coughs> yeah, that was um, that was pretty cool. And then, yeah, so we had those happen, and yeah, I mean, it was pretty eventful for our last uh, our last time there. We we did get quite a few personal experiences and things that were caught on audio and hopefully uh because one of the one of them was in the basement when we were getting cussed at i think he had i think he was recording that no yeah he probably was they they were walking around with video cameras like all night so yeah so i think that was recorded they're actually gonna have a lot yeah they're gonna have a lot of stuff put together here in the next couple months i Mm -hmm. think that uh, at some point in time we're actually gonna have a zoom call with them and go over any evidence that we got throughout the night. Probably not going to be a lot on our end because because um, we weren't recording all that much. I, I I have to listen to all of my audio. I just kind of did the cheat sheet where I threw it up in Audacity and looked for the small wave clips. files. Yeah, um, I did get an EVP. I haven't shared it with anybody yet, but like I said, I'll play it next week. Okay. Um, it was when the Doctor Ghost Hunter team actually went in the production room. They were asking some questions, and I did hear a response uh, Very cool. for, to one of their questions. So I'll have that cut and ready for next week. Yeah, we'll and probably I'll just... Also, I'll also uh, shorten up the video. So with the, the knocking and the woman's voice, I'll shorten that up. Because it is. I just looked at it. It's like a two-and-a-half-minute Yeah, minute it's like video. a two-minute clip. So I'm not going to play the whole thing. I'll cut it down to just those two parts. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, and then I'll throw, we'll play that next week as well. Yeah, let's do that. Um, and then anything else about the about the Ritz? If you guys never got to investigate it, too bad. We we tried bringing you guys. We had tickets. Some of you guys made it, but I don't know if that's going to be the last of it. But it was it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool getting to investigate that place. Well, we did have. What I thought was funny is during the SS method, going back and listening to the audio, and you guys told me about it. 
uh, at one point you were asking me questions and I didn't know that DVO had walked into the room. Oh yeah. Cause obviously I'm blindfolded. I've got my <laughs> noise canceling headphones on. I, I don't know what's going on around me. Um, I remember at one point saying like, leave. And yep. <laughs> if, if you go back and listen to, if I, when I listen to the audio, you can hear the door opening to the projection room. Mm-hmm. And I tried and then, scaring them. <laughs> and then I remember you were asking some questions. And then I remember saying like, uh, it might've been shortly after he came in. I was like, no, it's, I said friend and then said, don't leave. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, but some of the questions you were asking, I, I was giving kind of relevant responses. There was, uh, one time where I said, I believe I said demon and I said the devil. Yeah. Cause I could tell there was a presence hanging out in this, in the one office back there in the projection room. And I was asking what, who is that? And you're a demon or a demon. And I'm like, you're not a demon. And you're all, yeah. <laughs> you, it was funny. Cause you're like, is that what you just tell people you are? And right after I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then there's that one that was at the bottom of the stairs and I was asking, who's that? I don't think that's the devil. The devil. <laughs> well, no, you're not. <laughs> so uh, it's funny because, like, obviously I can't hear what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but at one point, like, in the recording, I can hear myself telling you I could hear you. Yeah, in the very beginning. And yeah, so that's when I then walked. you went somewhere else, and I couldn't hear you the rest of the time. Like I said, I didn't even hear the door open, and I didn't hear your brother come in the room. Yeah, because then you st- you kind of zone into that freak, like listening to those frequencies and trying to draw the like pull out the words. Yes. So yeah, you kind of get focused in on that. So we and, both did get the name Stephen during our SS. Yeah, uh, kept getting the name Stephen like crazy, um, and we had never got that before. And then I know when Doctor Ghost Hunters went up there, they got the name Steve. Oh really? Yeah, they didn't get the name Steve up there. Nice. And I w- it could have been Stephen because the way we were, I was like hearing a lot was like Steve N, Steve N. Yeah, um, I think I only heard it the one time. You only heard it the one time. I can't, I heard it multiple times. Um, what else? I think I think that might be the majority of pretty much. Yeah, but I mean, pretty eventful because that is quite a bit for. Yeah, we did have a lot night. going on, so I need to actually like sit down and go through all the audio and not just kind of skim it. <laughs> yeah, because there could be some more in there. There's there's probably some more in there somewhere. So I did leave my audio recorder in the projection room for like three hours unattended. So there there might be something in there. There very well could be. Well, hopefully hopefully there's a chance to go back and hopefully it gets restored to something cool if it if that ends up happening to it. But we'll play it by ear. Yeah, we will. <laughs> So yeah, as evidence pops up, like keep a lookout for Doctor Ghost Sirens. We'll also mention when they get their video uploaded of any stuff that they got on that investigation. We'll let you guys know. And you know what? Let's talk about that that episode of. Let's uh, talk about baby. Yeah. Let's talk about ghosts, you baby. And Let's talk about ghosts, baby. <laughs> so uh, you're talking about the episode uh, Jack Osborne did, and he brought his mom along with him. Yeah, someone recommended it to me. Um, so I did watch this when it came out, and I didn't bring it up it's either. Jack Osborne's Night of Terror, and they were at a an inn or a hotel in California. And he had his mom sharing along with it's him. It's the Glen Tavern Inn. And so the thing is, is his mom is like 70, in her 70s. She's never experienced Probably close to 80. They said 70 in the show. Oh. So I don't know how the episode is, but they said that she was like 70 years old, I think. I don't know. She's she's old. Yeah, she's and well into her 70s. She's never had a paranormal experience in her life. She's never. She doesn't really believe in the paranormal. She doesn't believe in ghosts and that. So... Jack wanted to take his mom on an investigation, and he took her to this this hotel. It's, they've investigated with her before. Have they? Yeah, they've done things before together. What I thought was interesting with this episode is they did bring in Chip Coffee. They did the whole, you know, normal, he doesn't know anything about this place. He doesn't know where he's at. We're going to walk him through and see what he says. And they started confirming some of the ghost stories that the owners had talked about uh, in one of the rooms, 307, there was a woman that was, they say they see a beheaded ghost in there, a woman with, you know, a ghost without a head. Mm-hmm. Um, and then 
when they were f- doing their preliminary tour, they got in the room. They all said they felt kind of like angry and sadness. Uh, when Chip got there, he went straight to that room. They didn't take him there. He felt the energy yeah. into that room. Uh, and this is all according to the Hollywood magic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he went straight to that room unprovoked or un- unguided, unguided <laughs> by Jack or Sharon. Um, <laughs> And he said the same thing. He said that there was an angry female spirit in there. He said there was a male spirit in there that was like kind of the the guy that was in charge of things. He knew about the the murder and that the woman was like beaten to death most likely. And then he they go to room three hundred eight, which is a suite down the corner. Uh, a lot of experiences there. People had seen spirits like charging at them and basically scaring them out of this room, right? And Chip straight up told Jack and Sharon, something's going to happen to you tonight, Sharon, and you're not supposed to be left alone in this room. And so what do they do on their investigation? They left her alone. In they the left room. her alone in the room that they were specifically told not to leave her alone in. And, well, you know, wouldn't you know that uh, something happened to her in that room because she was <laughs> left alone by herself after being warned by Chip Coffey not to. Um so she's, they, she's, they, they're like, we're going to do the sensory, de- sensory deprivation thing. They weren't doing the Estes method. They just blindfolded her and put her headphones on her and said, okay, have fun. Just chat out anything that you're feeling. And I'm yeah. like, that's an interesting way of doing it. That was super weird. Cause yeah, it wasn't, they weren't playing anything. I thought that they were actually doing like white noise. No, nothing. But, I don't, nothing. I don't think they were doing, they might've done white noise. I don't know. It, to me, it seemed like they just put noise canceling headphones on her and a blindfold and said, "Have fun." While he went down to the second uh, f- floor hallway, where they say they see kids that would run and like disappear through the walls, and so Chip's like, "Oh, if you investigate here, the kids will play with you." So instead of putting himself in the room that they're not supposed to leave Sharon alone in, uh, they okay, you sit in this room by myself. I'm going to go play with the kids, <laughs> and. Uh, she's asking questions. REM pods going off. She's like, that's happening. I don't know what it means. And then, it, and then she just like, she gets all quiet and her head slowly leans back and her arms drop to her side. And the camera guys are like, uh, are you okay? <coughs> and she's not responsive. And which makes sense. Cause she's got noise canceling headphones on. So. <laughs> right. So then they page Jack on the two way radio and he comes running and, they pick her up and put her on the floor and she's all like catatonic and unresponsive and they call an ambulance and they play the, um, the nine one one call. Yeah. And then they play sounds of an ambulance showing up, but they don't actually show one showing up. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the, when they do the review with the owners, they show just that they don't show any other evidence or anything they've collected throughout the night, which I think is funny. Because when I was listening to that episode, when I was watching it, there was a point in time where Jack asked a question, is there anyone in here with us? And before the REM pod started going off, you can hear Spirit say yes. Oh, really? Yep. You, uh-huh. I'll, I'll, I'll probably get that. I'll show it to you later. Um, but yeah, they're asking questions. They're, they're like... The, the way he did this investigation was very weird. Like I've never watched anything Jack Arsborn's done before. I just, I've said this about to, to somebody the other day. I, I wish I had Fitch, uh, Rich Fitch. I can talk rich, famous parents with a lot of money. So I can just have my own ghost hunting show. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, just, that's how you do it. Um, <laughs> well, he, he was on the Osborne show first. He, yes, he, was. he had, he had a camera presence already. Yes. And apparently his sister's a medium now. Uh, that, well, maybe that, she always was. Maybe she always was. That recently happened in the last like month. She came out as, <laughs> I'm a medium. Um, and she could be. I don't know. I haven't really looked into it. But just some of the stuff he was doing on the investigation I thought was a little awkward. They were trying to do like yes, no questions with the REM pod. Which to me doesn't make any sense. Because yeah. he's like, okay, if it's yes, make it light up. If it's no, then don't, don't do, do anything. anything. I'm like, all right, cool. So just ask questions, and if it doesn't it's, do anything, it's, it's always a no. Yeah, what right. The hell? <laughs> I'm like, at least <laughs> That's like, not how it works. at least have something like so on your flux. For example, the flux two, you have a red light and a green light. 
You can use that for yes or no. On the Ovilus 5 that I just got, they have a true false mode that has the same thing, a red light and a green light. You can use that to ask yes or no questions. But I've never, I've even seen the dual like mag lights. Turn this one on for yes, turn this one on for no. I've never seen someone just turn the REM pod on for yes and do nothing for no. Like, do nothing for that's, no. That's a great way of like <laughs> fixing your evidence, I think, <laughs> or just making the conversation go the way you want it to go. I thought that was very weird that they did that. Yeah, it was funny. It was funny, and I'm glad I, I've never seen it again. Right. I just, I didn't know. He did say, keep saying throughout the night, anytime the REM pod got off, went off, he's like, no one's using the two-way radio. And I'm like, okay, cool. At least he knew about that part. And, but the whole thing is like, okay, at the end of it, like I said, Sharon goes all catatonic, right? And yeah. they say that she doesn't remember anything past them saying, we're going to do this and putting the headphones. She said the last thing she remembered was putting the headphones on and putting the blindfold on. Right. And she's deprived of her senses. She probably doesn't have any sense of time at this point. Right. And with her age, I'm pretty sure she just passed out. Yeah. I'm kind of leaning towards that too. At first I thought I'm like, maybe this was staged for the show. Cause you know, like I said, the 911 call that they played could easily be faked. They, I mean, they could have just called a friend and been like, this is the 911 dispatcher. And then they didn't show an ambulance actually coming because, you know, that's not in the production budget um, to fake a 911 call. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't think, you, you're probably right. They probably didn't stage it, but I don't think it was paranormal related either. Because I was watching this, I was just like, I know the REM pod was going off. And again, you can set that off with two-way radios. And they made it very clear that they did have two-way radios in that show. So it is possible that they were doing something to set the REM pod off. And that you're right. I think she might have just fallen asleep. Yeah. I mean, with her age and then being, you know, she probably had, there's probably things going on where she takes medication for stuff. Who knows? Well, I just thought it was funny because he comes in the room and he's like, Again, she's wearing a blindfold and noise canceling headphones. And Mom, he's talking. Mom. <laughs> he wasn't even saying it loudly. He was using his normal voice. Mom, mom, are you okay? Are you okay, mom? <laughs> she's got a head. It's like you've got this shit on her. Like, take it off first, and then res- like he was. He was just barely like tapping her shoulder too. He wasn't like pushing or anything. I'm just like, this is how you respond when you think there's something wrong with your mom. That's what made me think it was might have been staged. Well, and then, uh, so he's got that show going on, right? And then there's another show going on called Buried Bloodlines. And they're both only like like a couple episodes in and nothing's been happening. I've been trying to watch more of these episodes going on. and I'm fine with nothing happening. It's, the, it's just the, the shows I have a problem with. It's like, there's a demon every episode. It's like, that's not how this works. No. Yeah, yeah not everything's a demon. That's, that's why it's like funny when... These spirits like try to say it to just to because it's like a big thing now. So the spirits like I'm a demon. Like no, you're not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just think it's funny. I mean, that I get it. It's for entertainment. This is what people want. They want the jump scares. They want to feel like you know the people involved are actually in danger. Which most of these places they go to, they're really not. Right. In my opinion. They're not really in dangerous situations. No. Not um, to the extent that they say they are. I'm yeah, honest. and they're like the I mean, people it's, that... It's all for entertainment, obviously. Yeah, the people that you see getting on ghost adventures that are falling down things and getting pushed down things for entertain Like, that shit don't happen. Like, I mean, it has it happened to... Th- yeah, but the ones that are going on ghost adventures... And- have I passed out on investigations before? Yes, I have. Yeah, but, but there's... These have ones- I seen people get channeled? Yes, I have. But it's not every investigation. Right, and it's not extreme every single time, and... Yeah, it's... it's- I've had to deal with, like, spirits trying to channel through people or doing things that they shouldn't be doing, but... Or there's times it's, where it's it's very rare that I deal with something like that. Or where there's like somebody because it's dark creeps up behind you and you turn around and not realize somebody's there and that freaks you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> or there's bats that fly around and you don't or owls, you, or owls and you're not ready for that. <laughs> right. Make them flying at you. Those are genuine scares. <laughs> yes. <laughs> those will, those will get screams, but uh. Or little creatures that crawl, like what Paul's seen. Yes. That'll get a good scream out of you. Yep. 
But I was standing right next to what happened too. I yeah, didn't see it. I was I was upstairs at a across the restaurant. I still heard it like it was right <laughs> next to me. Well, should we call that an episode? Well, before we go, let's talk about the socials and stuff. Let's talk about the socials. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, this is a short episode, uh, but that's just what you get. So um, it's not that short. It's, a it's good not that short. This was actually a pretty good episode. It was it was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Yes, Stevie, I know. Don't say that, but we did, so deal with it. Yeah, we um, edited and we don't edit <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, check us out on social media. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at evp.pod. If you have a story you'd like to share with us, you can do so at evp.pod at gmail.com. And while you're checking out our socials, check out our affiliate link to Ghost Up. Buy some ghost hunting gear from there. The Ovilus 5, they got the new Christmas edition. There's a Christmas edition? There's a Christmas Is it edition. green and red? No, it's white. Oh, it's peppermint sticks? It's, yeah, it's like peppermint. It's white. <laughs> I think it's Dude. white and red. Hell they just yeah. announced it. So uh, go check out the Ovilus 5, see if they still have some in stock. Because they last I got the, the email I saw like two days ago said so they had some. So uh, maybe they still do. I don't know. It's a cold little device. I'm actually really liking this one. I like it. I like it so far. And I I want to do more with that when we do the SS method and have it around and see if that kind yes. of correlates at the same time. Yep. I think oh, that'd right, be really right, cool. Be fun. Did I miss anything? Uh, no, I think you got it all. This is, I think this is... The affiliate link, I'll you just, did that, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I think, I'd, uh, yeah. Sure, yeah. why not? So yeah. check this out. This will be our second to last episode this year. We're going to do one more episode, and then we're going to take a break for the holidays because Christmas and New Year's are both on Mondays this year. Yeah. And you know what? Go see Don't Play that. Peace out, butterflies. This is the EVP Podcast. <laughs>